One of the issues on that rim that we had, it was an 18. So we got a 17. 7.5J with the offsets and what I'm currently building. I'm sure it's a win-win now. We're keeping it fresh. So check this baby out. One of the most crucial components of our build is definitely going to be the shock placement and shock mount uh, relocation. Yeah guys, uh, other than the firewall fabrication and the custom engine mount and the customization on the chassis legs, we now have to reallocate and move the shock towers at least 5 centimeters to the right and 5 centimeters to the left. So this is our braces, this is actually keeping it nice and strong until we can cut this out and actually move it out there. The problem, the reason why is the shock is sitting uh, at the wrong angle. So that's not gonna allow the car to get the relevant shock absorption and also spacing and uh, balancing, etc. So we have to allocate that according to the subframe of the G7. And once we move that out a little bit, we're now gonna have a better allocation, a better ride, and the car will be able to be running on the road short. What's happening here is this car has been decontaminated but they ran a yellow pad meaning they cleaned up the paint it's oh it's smoother eh? now they're putting 3000 they're running a 3000 with a light grid pad to give it that super gloss before we prepare for ceramic coating and after ceramic coating we're going to put ppf on the front so tomorrow you guys are going to see what that looks like uh, this is a kia sportage gt line looks quite pretty eh? but the paintwork is coming out awesome the guys that did a stunning job. 
But chick was there. Chick was there. Chick was there. GTS, Danny. GTS. How's the freaking heat, guys? How's the heat? It's hot. The last five days, Thrive Smoothie Bar. I've been enjoying the smoothies. It's been helping me cool down. But it's been hot. For those of you that's been heating up there, I don't know how you guys are coping, but yeah. I got something cool to show you here. So what I understand is we've repositioned the shock mounts to get better alignment and more sturdy and rigidity when driving. Not only that, for positioning of the shock. Remember on this car, we have to do a custom bag placement. So the custom bag has to be manufactured because you can't just, there is no bag for this car. So in actual fact, the company that's making the bag for me, they needed us to move this shock mount five centimeters to the right. So if you guys see here, this is a Golf 7 GTI shock mounting and we've actually moved it five centimeters and I think what, uh, three centimeters up? three centimeters up so we've raised it a little bit because we also want to drop the car because the subframe on the mark ones are lower than the chassis yeah if i'm correct now as you can see our weld fabrication so this has been custom made this whole section has been welded and been fabricated with a slant so it looks neater that's what it looks like when it's bare so you can see what it looks like when it's bare and then you can see what that looks like when it's closed so I can't wait for these two things to be done, man. It's holding me back so I can put my motor in and I need to start my engine so I can put my wires in there. And then the roll cage is coming in next week. Uh, I think if March goes well, we should be able to, April, it's fabrication finished and it's body preps in the month of April. Body preparation, making sure everything is fine. And then Madala got the month of May to spray this car with his team. And then we're taking this car to KZN for gas motor show. So I hope you guys are enjoying this because from now, we just need to make sure that we stick to the program. It's a tough journey, but every day, late hours, I'm very proud. Thank you, guys. Okay, check here. What were some of the challenges that one experienced when building the cat section? Jesus made the mounting. <laughs> I couldn't put the plug in, so I had to slice the mounting a little bit. But but you all made the mounting together. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Not. But we the people want to know some of the experiences. Big camera there. <laughs> <laughs> they want to know some of the experiences you you had building this. Stressful. Very stressful. <laughs> Where can she go up? Kill it. This up. It's like a one man party here. You know what you done already? Right? You're back in my day. Back in all this, yeah. You were all this. Come here to cast. What's happening here? This, this reminds me of. You know, like those, those serial killer <laughs> movies. <laughs> Jeffy Dahmer. <laughs> You <laughs> found one big camera and he's and having a party. <laughs> he's like vlogging everything. Look at this. He's even got another one. <laughs> Golf 7 GTI motor. Not only that, it's got a full DSG gearbox. Not only that, guys, we're the first to confidently say we have power steering. Boost bikes. Original dashboards. Sorry.
targets. So what we got here is a custom, that's a custom mount, that's a gearbox mount, customized. Right, and then watch it. It's so bumping, it's so bumping, it's so bumping. Alright, but check here. Guys, this is dope. This, this is an engine mount. Hi. <laughs> How far are we? Okay, so we're about 80%. I think if not 90, we just need to start fueling next. So, and then A. But A is okay because we're not going to worry too much about that. But I think it's just fueling. Uh, and now we're just sorting all the ground out. Right guys, as you can see, we're about to start the engine. Like, uh, I'm emotional, I'm very emotional, and I can't believe this, what's just happened here. Throw in the sauce. Yes, my tongue is even twisting. What's this? What's this? What's this? Almost on the 15th of March, we will start up this baby. We weren't joking. We're about to start up this baby. I'm coming here. Coming to the key house. Bring it to the side. We spent hours and hours. It's literally one o'clock in the morning. I'm gonna turn that ignition. Okay, when you guys are ready, are you guys too ready? Yeah. Let's go!
Just a general day here at the Big Bite Stable. You know what we're busy doing here? Installing awesome splitters for this client. And you know what this client, how oh, I said client, this client smacks, he smacks carbon, carbon. So I love the look on carbon. Carbon fiber always looks. What do you mean carbon? Carbon fiber. Carbon fiber. Yes, carbon, carbon fire. Carbon fire. Cabs on fire. All this thing here. And what did you do here, Mao? So you did stone chip repair. <laughs> yeah. So you touched up, you flatted, now you're polishing. You won't even say there was stone chips there, bruh. Because bra is so varum. Then we did the full detail. Interior is nice and clean. Some feedback on our MK1. Okay, ladies. How are y'all? Are y'all on holiday? Yes. That's your problem. Holiday. Okay, so, the, so Marco is busy doing his thing here. He's measuring day, he knows how to use a measuring tape. In 1932, <laughs> he learned how to use a measuring tape. <laughs> Madala is here also busy. Oh, Check Madala, he's doing his thing. Madala, why, what are you doing today? Hi. Uh, so one is holding the measuring tape. <laughs> <laughs> They're gonna build a roll cage for me. They're gonna close up all the wells. They're gonna seal this car. Make sure everything is fine. Hey, it works, eh, Madala? Uh, I'm happy. Okay, now this process is something that you guys need to understand. I know that this was a very tough one, but we decided to go with it. So we had to get another axle for our MK1 to do our mock-ups. So what we're going to do is we're going to make this a 5100. So we're going to change the hub. We're going to make sure that that fits perfectly onto this car, onto the Mark 1. But the big challenge was, how do we get the Golf 7 GTI caliper to actually fit on that. Yeah, so the truth is it doesn't fit. Golf 7 GTI, so come have a look here. So you guys will see what I'm saying. The Golf 7 GTI caliper does not fit on the 5.0 or the 400 MK1 or the MK3. Doesn't fit. Kireshin, show me your caliper parts and your 500 hub. So what we have to do, we have to send it to some professionals that can actually get this done for us. So they have claimed that they're going to take that seven calipers. So this is your stub. So this, and then we're gonna put this new braking system. And to be honest with you guys, I think you're gonna enjoy this process because we're actually making our own discs, eh? So we have to make our own discs. So our brand new disc gonna be cut. So a brand new disc is gonna be, so we're gonna get a new disc. So this goes from here, ne? Yeah. Right. So we're gonna make a new disc. I think it's gonna be bigger, eh? And bring me the caliper there. This is your Golf 7 GTI caliper. We're gonna actually make this work with a new custom disc. So we're gonna show you that place, uh, that process later. And then we're also gonna show you what we're gonna put on our disc. What we're gonna do, our uh, um, custom it's vent. A secret. Okay, it's a secret. He doesn't want to tell the guys. Coming soon. Coming soon. So we will achieve, if I'm right, we're going to achieve, uh, just show them the seven caliper quickly. And if you look at the back of the caliper, you see this thing here, guys. See this? This is the actual handbrake. Uh, and that's the module. So this is the reason why we're pushing for this. So that this component can allow for... Button handbrake. Button handbrake. On a Mark One. I. I don't know if that's been done before. Button handbrake. On the Come on, button handbrake on the Mark 1. And then what's happening here, Kirishan? Okay, so here, yeah. basically, we're taking our templates for our firewall. Right. So this basically is a plate that's going to go onto our firewall like this. Right. For my brake booster. <coughs> so you chopped that off the 7, eh? Yeah. So this oh. is basically, I'm mocking this up so that my brake booster, our new brake booster can fit. What brake booster you went with? I see you changed your brake booster. Polo 7. You went to the Polo 7? Polo 7. Uh, and then he's now going to make this plate so steel will arrive. He's custom mocking. So that whole firewall and frontal roll cage is you. So he's also, you can go next door and he can show you he's busy designing. Uh, how he's, what, do you, what will you call that? It's not a roll cage, your front one. Basically a roll bar sort of thing. For the front? For the front. And then that's to strengthen your? My fender walls. Yes. My shock bounds. Yes. And basically our cradle also. Now that's all covered. Now what about chassis to chassis? Uh, chassis to chassis we're building our strut. So we're going to have one. So you got your, you got your, I can see you got your actual um, uh, frame, right? Your subframe. That's actually creating. Really holding my bottom. 
it's holding. Now what you're gonna do on the top, you're gonna put a strut bar. Strut so bar. we're gonna, but now why can't we have one more? One more, for, for the front, I think we'll be done with this engine. From the radiator, the intercooler, one more bar there. From yeah, that's chest. gonna have one across. Or one across, like that there. And then we should consider one more from there to there. But anyway, you'll show us the journey. It's all gonna happen. So next week I think is gonna be a seriously busy week. Before the 1st of April, I'm gonna say, roll maybe kid. Maybe test drive. Maybe test drive. <laughs> hey, that guy makes me excited for nothing. Okay, shot man, shot. So, uh, Kalen, okay. what have you been busy with, bro? What's, what's good? This info has been taking up a lot of your, a lot of your time, bro. I noticed you've been, you've been busy the whole freaking week. Yeah. I what mean, was it's a three-stage cut, eh? It's not a joke. Uh, quarter panels were quite bad. Yeah. Uh, doors also quite bad. A panels also quite so bad. So what percentage are you? I know there's dust in your car now, but where where are you at now? My final step, uh, three thousand. So what you mean? You can we mark this car later though? Hundred percent. So okay. we can check exactly. So we pull it out in the sun. Okay. Now what did you do for the PPF in the front? Are you gonna hand polish that? We currently doing the touch ups on. No, the I mean like there was existing PPF on this bonnet and right. fenders. So are you gonna run a light three thousand on that as well? 100%. Just I would give it that gloss to bring out that oxidization, or you can hand polish it anyway, whichever the one you choose. I rather prefer machine polish. Oh, no, that looks sexy, huh? Eh? Oh, that looks nice, eh? Oh, Eesh. the transformation is happening. Shot, bro. Okay, so that's just basically the day. Now let's go check out the car wash. I always wanted an executive, uh, professional car wash, you know. For me, it's not about quantity. I don't want to see 50 cars here because then my staff won't be able to cope. The biggest problem is with having quantity is that, that it's in, out, in, out, and then I feel that you can't get that extra tinge of quality to your business. So for example, this A45 came in yesterday. The client needed it in one day, but I kept it over. The reason being is that we did a mini detail on this car. Mini detail takes time. Intense brake cleaning, intense hub cleaning, rim cleaning, uh, interior, one bucket, hand polish, ceramic coating. But yet it, it's booked for a car wash. But I mean, look at this engine detail. I mean, that's the way I want an engine to look when I'm done, even though it's just for a car wash. And also, this is affordable. You know, uh, like a normal package, like that Golf R. Now, these type of cars, people come here because they know that these cars are safe with me. And that's what I like, is the safety knowing that I'm capable of executing. So this is gonna be hand polished and ceramic sprayed. And that's all for 750 bucks. Done. The guy gets his car. And then we got that, another R on that side. So things are happening. You know what I like about this? Is that people know that Big Bike Car Wash is not about quantity, but we're about quality. You know what I'm saying?